Hello! Look what just turned up in the mail. Another box from Upcrate, full of mystery art supplies. How exciting! And this one, as we can see here, is from March 2022. When I got this, it was late May. It is quite possibly early June when this video goes up, so we're just a little bit behind here. I'm not sure if that's because of our slow postal service, or perhaps Upcrate have been sending me boxes that are left over from previous months, because they sent this to me for free, and I am so super grateful because getting free anything is always exciting, and free art supplies is just the best. <laughs> so thank you very much to Upcrate for posting this out to me. I'm very glad to have received a second box, and without further ado, let's get into it! This one definitely doesn't look like it's been opened by customs, so I should be opening it from the side that you're supposed to. So on the back of the box, it says, cast off, loosen the lines. I'm trying to do this close so it doesn't show my address on here. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. You are getting closer. Thank you for having you on board, mate. Let's get it open. Ooh, weird supplies inside. Let's pull everything out of the box. Inside are all of the art supplies. I thought this was a magazine, but it's actually a little book. So we'll come back to that in a moment. And then we have their monthly magazine bottle post, which I will look at in a little bit because it has the supplies inside and I don't want to be a total spoiler. <laughs> then we have these really cute stickers. I just love the stickers that come in the Upcrate boxes. These are, I'm pretty sure, that vinyl feeling to them and they're really nice quality. How cute are these? And then there's also an artwork. This is by Yulia Orlova. That's really nice. I like the abstractness, but that it still looks like something. So that's really cool. And on the back, ooh, <laughs> there's a whole bunch more. Pop that up there so you can read about the artist. Interesting kind of collage or doodle pages. A voucher for HelloFresh. <laughs> well, that's not very helpful here, I don't think. Although Australia does have HelloFresh, so I don't know. <laughs> I'll keep it because the card's nice and I'm sure I will use it for something. It's time for art. So first up is this book, Art Space. 15% off everything in the shop, it says. I'm pretty sure I have a 15% off voucher. I will link a code in the description below so you can check that out and if you want to order an upcrate for yourself, you'll get 15% off. This paper looks like it's watercolour to me. It's got quite a texture. I don't know if you can see it. It's quite a cold pressed texture on that. So I shall have to look in the magazine to see what it says. I'm absolutely curious to see what's in this bag of goodies. Oh my gosh, there's so many things in here. This is not the one I thought it was going to be because I've seen a few other up crates recently and I actually thought it was a different box altogether. No, this is not what I thought at all and I'm so excited to get into this. So I'm going to bring them all out one by one so we can see them properly. But how much stuff is in here? That's amazing. So we have a graphite pencil in a 2B, which is quite a nice softish lead to use, but not too soft. A Micron 10, this is a pigment liner, archival ink, this is also waterproof ink, so that's really great. Wow, that is a chunky nib on that. And it's a micro pigment ink for waterproof and fade proof lines. I've used Pigma Microns before, they're really nice pens. I don't know that I have one quite as thick as this though, so that's nice. Then we have some Brush X, I've never seen this before, it looks like it might be branded for Upcrate specifically. Extinguishing solution for brush pen and ink. I have no idea. I don't know what that is. Oh, here we go. Brush X removes non-permanent inks on paper. Mixed media or watercolour papers are best suited. It can take a few seconds until the colour is completely erased. How interesting is that? I don't have anything like this, so I'm really curious to see if this works. We have a Da Vinci Fit Synthetics brush. That's really pretty, I like that. That's the flat brush. I think it's the only one in here. It looks like there's a whole bunch of different ones though. And that is very much stuck down. So there's a whole range of them. I like that pretty green too. And then we have a few painty supplies. 
which you can already see on the camera because I've somehow moved everything. But let's pick these ones up first. We've got four Ecoline brush pens. We've got a black, a pastel yellow, yellow ochre, and turquoise blue. I do love a turquoise and it looks like these two colors will go really nicely together. I'm already thinking sandy beaches and sparkling oceans. The last thing in the box are these three tubes of watercolors and they are Van Gogh or Van Gogh. We have indigo, turquoise green and yellow ochre. So we've got two ochre colors here. This turquoise is a turquoise blue, but we've got a turquoise blue and a green. And then we've got the indigo on its own. I have used the pans of Van Gogh watercolor and they're really nice. I've never used the tubes before, so I'm happy to have a few of these to try out and play around with as well. So that's a pretty impressive box of art supplies. I really like the fact that there's so many paints and watercolor brush pens to try out. And I'm also very curious about this paper because it feels nice and thick. So I think I'll just take a quick look in the magazine to clarify a few of these products and we can see some of the artworks as well. I'm going to have to experiment with it. I don't know if it's going to work quite as well as that. I guess we're going to be finding that out together. It's just something I have never seen or heard of. Well, at least it's got some instructions on how to use it because I've got no idea. That's interesting to know. It says the Brush X Erasing Liquid does not work with the Van Gogh watercolors from this box, but with the Ecoline brush pens. I guess probably because the brush pens, I'm sure, are made with a dye based ink and the tubes of watercolor are made from pigment so these are much heavier and won't easily erase the way that dye based inks will. I have other brands of liquid watercolors which I'd be kind of curious to see if it works on those as well so there's an experiment to do. It's nice to have a color chart in there I always appreciate that. And I'm curious about this. It is a watercolor booklet. I knew it. A5 pad has 10 sheets of 230 gram heavy watercolor paper. Thanks to the ring binder binding, it opens comfortably flat when drawing. It does, but <laughs> it does kind of ping up a bit. So it's like any book I find you do have to kind of bend it a bit for it to stay flat. But that's nothing that a couple of clips won't fix. like her style and the color palettes are nice. prompt for a few months ago now is miraculous creatures so I guess I'm going to have to come up with something not a clue at the moment I might take a look through the book for some inspiration and maybe get some ideas from the artist herself because I kind of like some of these things maybe I can come up with my own character that looks like this before I do that I might actually swap out all of the materials just to see what they look like. I'm never a big fan of swatching in a brand new book because I don't like seeing the ugly swatches afterwards so I'm going to actually just do it on a separate piece of paper that I have lying around and then I'm going to do my artworks all in the book. Swatching everything out I had to speed it up because I got chatting and I always lose track of time so in the end I'm just having to do a voiceover anyway. Apologies if you see my hands gesturing that's because I'm talking while I'm doing this but I've swatched out the pencil and the Micron 10 pen. 
Those worked perfectly fine and now I'm testing out the Ecoline brush pens. They have a really nice brush nib on them and you can get a wide range of lines from thin to thick. Here's the turquoise, such a stunningly beautiful colour. I really love that one. And the solid colours I'm swatching beside them is so I can paint over it with water once I'm done. I wanted to leave everything to dry first though. The yellow oak is a really nice colour and then this pastel yellow is much lighter and not very easy to see it all on camera. So the ink had fully dried and now I'm trying to reactivate it with water from the brush. It didn't work that well as you could see the turquoise blues not really picking up much at all and you could see the harsh pen line underneath which did not blend out. That pale yellow didn't seem to lift at all. So my next test is to paint over the wet ink and as you can see it disperses out really well in the water but you've got to be so quick and so an easier technique is to colour the pen onto some ceramic or plastic and then paint it out like watercolour. So next up I wanted to try out that brush X and see what happens. Supposedly it lifts all of the ink off the paper so we will see how that goes. I wanted to let them dry completely on the paper first so I'm talking about the watercolour paints here and I decided to squeeze some in from the tubes just into this little dish that I have. I'll probably make up some half pans at some point but this is good enough for today. I picked up two of those little kidney shaped dishes in a charity shop recently. They're always so handy for putting paint onto especially watercolours like this and you can see the paints managed to get all over my hands too. Never mind I cleaned myself up and I'm just testing out these colours. That indigo is stunning, really deep and saturated. I have a dry pan of it as well and I liked it then too so I'm very happy to have the tube version of it. Next up is turquoise green and when I was first looking at it here I was speculating that it looks like a cobalt green or something like that. It's not got a very high tinting strength and it's also really transparent. I'll come back to that shortly. Here's the yellow ochre as well looking very similar to that Ecoline yellow and I did eventually find some pigment information on the tubes light fast one is the highest light fast you can get. So this turquoise green is actually a mix of phthalo blue and ultramarine. I did not pick that. Normally phthalo blue is a much more intense shade and I don't know how they got that mix but there we go. <laughs> but now to try some of this brush X on the eco line pens to see if it works. So I'm starting off with the black and wow it happens almost instantaneously and the turquoise took a tiny bit longer, the yellow was almost immediate as well. I noticed on the black though that the lines were yellow underneath whereas the other two went completely white. It also works on all of these other little swatches I have and it's excellent. It was a bit whiter on the lighter part of the black. I think I'd done a few too many layers on that initial swatch. I also tried it just for funsies on the watercolour paint but it definitely doesn't work. Now I'm trying out some dye based dilutions ink to see if it will work and this other dye based product that I have which is an Australian one I think. I need to do a review on those at some point. Really pretty colour. So let's see if the brush X works on these. And yes it does! It's really exciting to know it works with other dye based things like this and it means that I can use all of my products with this brush X. I'm happy about that. I guess now it's time to do some actual art and I washi taped around the first page in the sketchbook. I'd mentioned earlier that I was thinking of a beachy scene with the colours that were in the palette. I went straight on with the pens and they just would not reactivate with water even immediately after drawing with the pen so that paper just sucked it right in. From then on I decided just to use a watercolour technique picking the ink up from the dish because I could get a nicer wash with it. A bit more gentle in this case. The pens straight on the paper were very intense. The watercolour paper in the sketchbook is most definitely not cotton, it is 100% cellulose. And if I'm perfectly honest I wasn't really keen on it. You can see at the moment my artwork is an absolute mess. I just couldn't really get the desired effect I wanted from the Ecoline pens because it just would not reactivate on that paper. It was so frustrating. I did my best. I just painted out the yellow bits in the sky and the ocean and then went around it with the turquoise trying not to make too much green. 
But I have to say that brush axe really saved the day because I was able to lift a whole bunch of my little errors up off the page and use the brush axe like a white highlight rather than going over with a white gel pen or something like that. So it worked out really well and I think it's a very effective technique. I was even able to fix up that sand a bit and make it look like the water was foaming onto the beach. So my disaster was mostly averted. This is on the front page too. I should have flipped a few in so I didn't make a mess of that front page, but never mind, it's worked out okay in the end. I also did this in the sky and anywhere where it just looked messy. Unfortunately, the black Ecoline pen bled immediately onto the page, so I swapped it out for the Micron pen instead. This was easier to use and I was able to get some relatively fine lines even though it does have a chunky nib and I'm drawing in some palm tree silhouettes just to kind of make the picture look a bit more interesting and to hide a few more of my mistakes in that dodgy looking background. So aside from my issues of not being able to get the pens to re-wet on the paper, I really do like the colour palette together, especially the turquoise and the ochre. Those two are so pretty together. The pale yellow probably wasn't even that necessary in the box, but I managed to make it work for this for the sunlight. The washi tape ripped the paper as well, nothing I could do about that. Never mind, here's the first page done. That brush hex saved the day. Next up, I took some inspiration out of the Bottle Post magazine and went for those rocks that you see in the top left hand corner. I just drew in my own ones and I'm using the watercolour paints for this particular design here. The indigo turquoise green and yellow ochre. By now the paints had dried onto the ceramic so I was re-wetting them with plain water and I noticed that the indigo and yellow ochre were easily reactivated, they had no issues, but the other one which is the turquoise green was a lot more difficult to actually re-wet, it just didn't want to. It was really acting like a cobalt pigment and not like I would expect ultramarine and Thalo Blue mixed together to behave. Thalo Blue is normally one that reactivates really quickly, but never mind, that was my only little issue. Once I'd let my abstract rocks dry, I felt like it needed something else, so I drew a little border around the edges of it using the pencil that came in the box and also the Micron pen. And then I picked up the Ecoline pens and drew some little shell details, I don't even know what they're supposed to be, blobs, let's call them that, around the edges to make an interesting looking border. I ended up using all of the colours in the set that I had, doing larger circles with the ochre and turquoise, and then some smaller ones with the pale yellow and the black. That black pen kept bleeding into the paper, even on dry paper that I hadn't drawn on, so that one was a little frustrating, but the other three pens were fine. And once I had done this, I then went in with the brush X and painted on some little designs that I'd pulled out of the book for inspiration because I just thought they were nice. So the brush that comes with the bottle is not very precise, so I made a bit of a mess with these. It would probably be easier with a much finer brush. I drew in just a few black lines and here's the final artwork using everything in the box. I had time for one more, so I am using the artist's little drawing here as an inspiration for my little artwork. I came up with my own little creatures though. I had completely forgotten about the prompt, which is miraculous creatures, but thankfully this drawing actually kind of relates to that. It was only when I was editing the magazine flip through that I was reminded of it. Oops! Good one, Becky. But anyway, once I had drawn everything out with the pencil, I went over all of my lines with that black micron pen. It is a bit chunky and very difficult to get some nice thin lines with it in this case. So what I did was I went over everything with just a basic line and then I was going to worry more about getting some variation in line width. And the way to do that, once I have finished here, is just to go over bits and just colour them so that they look a bit darker. Normally I would go in with a finer pen and then just go with a thicker pen, but this way works just as well and we make do with what we have in the box. So overall, this design was quite cute, it's very silly, but I actually quite liked how it turned out. 
and I was feeling more inspired by the eco line pens so once again I used those for this artwork rather than the watercolor paints I just wasn't feeling those as much this time around it happens I think I was just enjoying that brush X too much for this one so I ended up using it a bit in this painting too. Right at the end I did some light washes on the background and then I went in with a darker pen for the two little creatures. I nearly made a mess a few times but I think I pulled it together in the end. Okay, I think I'm done making a mess today. <laughs> I had fun with these. I liked the supplies. They were quite difficult on this paper though and I'm not sure how they're going to go on. Perhaps some cotton paper might be a bit better but anyway I managed to get some art done. I had a lot of fun with this stuff. The brush is a little bit awkward and I think I would want to get a really fine brush to get a much better detail from it but I was able to get something. The actual brush itself was fine as was the pencil and the pen a little bit chunky and cumbersome at times I do prefer a thinner nib the paints were okay this one did not want to re-wet off my palette very well but the indigo and the yellow ochre are very good and the black in this slot was just bleeding everywhere but the other three colors were fine so my little artworks that I ended up with, this actually turned out a bit better than I expected at the beginning when I thought I'd made a total mess. This brush X saved the day on that and I think it's quite pretty. I like the colours together. The pastel yellow shows up quite well here. Then I've got my little rocks. I really love the colour palette on here and I enjoyed painting the lines on these. Some of them didn't work quite as well, maybe they could do with the second coat, but the stuff does tend to bleed really easily, so you have to be careful with it. And last one, the turquoise does get very dark when you layer it over a few times. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was fun to see all of the mystery art supplies inside the box. Thank you once again to Upcrate for sending this box to me, it was a great pleasure opening it and making up some artworks. So if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more videos, and I will see you all again really soon in my next video. I'll swatch you later, bye!